Hey everyone, this is Javert Valbar here for InscapeDigital.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how I created part of my ink title sequence for the CreativeDojo.net contest, with prizes awarded courtesy of Rodipolis.com. The contest is now over, but you can still download the three ink assets from the website if you want to practice or create your own animation. Here I have the footage of my actor trimmed and positioned to my liking. Before I do anything, I'm going to create another composite shot and name it Ink Together. I'll drag two of the ink flows onto the timeline, and position and scale this first one here so that it fills a good portion of the screen. However, the problem with this is once the initial blob of ink has passed over to the left, there isn't much room for the actor's face to show through. That's why I'm bringing in this second flow, and I'll position it on the right side. Set the first ink's blending mode to multiply, and now you should have both visible. Together, they cover more screen space, which will help your actor have more coverage. Back in the main comp, let's drag that ink composite shot down here, then click the eye to hide it. Drag the set matte effect onto your actor footage, and set the source layer to the ink, and the matte source to luminance. Check mark the invert button, and now you should see that your actor footage fills up the ink matte. I also added a speed effect to the ink comp so that the flow would be faster. Alright, so now we need a background for this whole animation. I have this light marble texture here. I'll drag that to the bottom and make it 3D. Make your actor and your ink flow 3D as well. Let's blend our actor footage better by setting the blending mode to hard light. Remember that you can always go back into the ink comp and adjust the position and scale of the ink if it doesn't cover enough of the screen. Let's add the tint effect to our footage and set the matte black to a dark brown color. This helps wash out some of the color and blend it better with the background. Then add a curves to bring back some of the contrast. Now I'm going to create a text box and write Austin's name in it. The font I used for this was called Luminari. Set the blending mode to color burn. Now we want the text to turn white if the ink mat passes over it. To do this, Duplicate your text layer and place it on top. Change it to a white color, then add the set matte effect. Like before, set the source layer to the ink and the matte source to luminance. Check mark the invert button and you'll see that now it only shows if there is ink on it. If you want, you can add another set matte effect and set the source layer to the background marble, which gives the text a little bit more texture than just being plain white. Don't forget to make both of your text layers 3D as well. So now we have our video mat and text setup, let's go ahead and make it look more cinematic. I'll start by adding a light. Once you back it up, you can see that it adds a nice light and dark variation to the video. Play around with the intensity and position until you get something that looks good. Now I'll add a grade, and of course the first thing I put on there is lens dirt. But I'm not going to use the built-in texture. Instead I'll drag this one I found down to the timeline. And in the options I'll set the dirt layer to that picture. Next, I'll add curves to add some green to the shadows, then bleach bypass set to around 20%. Now I'll add this flicker effect. This gives the impression that the light in the video is more of a lantern or fire of sorts. I kept the frequency and the amplitude low, I didn't want it to be too annoying. Then a vignette in 1080p, and last was the letterbox. One extra thing that I did was add another grade and drop the zoom blur effect onto it. Then I created a circle mask for that grade and feathered it. This simulated a kind of lens distortion around the edges. And then of course I had to tweak the color correction and light position to get the look that I was going for. If you wanted to have multiple people in your title sequence like I did, you would just have to keyframe the position of the camera to move around your scene. If the edges of any of your videos are sharp, just add a mask and feather it. If you're interested in the other entries for the contest, you can still watch them on Creative Dojo's website. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you all in the next tutorial.